Hi everyone, it's Tish with Naptime Creations. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out a lot. So hit that subscribe button. Really quickly before we jump into today's video, I wanted to share with you guys these new molds that I picked up from Blue Create Molds. This little cherry blossom is so cute. It comes with two mirrors. It's like a little compact or you could use it as a um, shaker charm keychain. Um, either one would work. She has a lot of really cool molds in her shop, but this is the one we're going to be doing today, this calendar. I was so excited to make this because I've been needing one of these for so long, so I thought, eh, I'll just make one. So we're going to be using some glitter for this project, and I'll link Blue Create Molds um, website down below in the description box if you want to go check her out. So this is Opal, or no, I'm sorry, this is Afterglow. Um, this one is kind of like a opalescent white color shifting glitter. Super pretty. And this one here is Opal 2.0 from Win Modern Art. It's a really fine iridescent glitter. And I am going to be pouring this in two layers. This first layer we're going to do is glitter. And I'm using the Total Boat High Performance Epoxy for this first layer. And I did mix up my resin off camera just to save time, but if you're new to resin and you want to see a tutorial showing step-by-step -step how to mix your resin, check out my Milky Way coaster tutorial. I'll link it down below. I show you step-by-step -step how to mix your resin. I just cut the mixing out of this video to save time because this video is a little bit longer. Now I'm going in with a silicone paintbrush and I'm just kind of blending those sections of glitter together, going around the perimeter of the mold to dislodge any bubbles. I'm going to hit it with my heat gun on um, low to pop bubbles and I'm going to fill up this cherry blossom mold with opal pink beauty glitter from Laura's Art Corner. It's such a pretty color. I thought it would be perfect for this cherry blossom. And that's it. I'm going to hit them both with my heat gun on low to pop bubbles. Here we are the next day. We're going to be using this Color Passion Cell Base White, also from Laura's Art Corner. And I'm just going to be filling up the mold the rest of the way. And for this layer, I'm also using the Total Boat High Performance Epoxy. I'm just taking a little um, silicone spatula, kind of smoothing out that white. I wanted to make sure I didn't overfill this. Um, I want to say total, this mold takes about six ounces, but since I poured it in two layers, I did a really terrible job keeping track of that. But if you guys are ever curious on how much a mold takes, just take a measuring cup, like a glass one, you know, that's marked with the fluid ounces on the side and fill your mold up with water then you'll know exactly how much resin to uh, use when you use it for the first time. I added a little bit more white, hit it with my heat gun on low to pop bubbles and that was it. I covered it up with an upside down storage container for 24 hours and here we are, popped it out of the mold. I think it turned out so pretty. I just love these colors together. They're so, so soft and beautiful. And when you use glitter for your first layer and you pour like a white backing layer, it really, really makes that glitter pop more if you add an opaque background. I know it's kind of like, eh, because it's an extra layer. It'll take an extra day, but I promise it'll make your glitter um, pop more if you do that. And here's how the little shaker charm turned out. The opal pink beauty is such a gorgeous glitter too. I'll link all these materials down below in the description box along with any coupon codes that I have. So now we're going to fill in the etched design, uh, the actual calendar part on this piece. I'm taking some Amsterdam black acrylic paint. I like to use Amsterdam brand paint when I do this because it's thicker and I find that it works better than thinner paint. I took a paintbrush, really scrubbed it in, and now I'm going in with a squeegee. And on this one, it did not come off very clean, um, but no worries if this happens to you, don't stress, it's easy to fix. I also pressed down really hard on that first pass. You want to make sure you don't apply much pressure when you do this. Just let the squeegee do the work and kind of glide the squeegee over your piece. This is the next day. So what I did um, after I did all my passes with the squeegee, I just left it. And then I took some 91% isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel and cleaned off all of that excess that was left on top. And you can see it comes right off. All of the paint stays in the etched parts or the engraved parts. 
Um, it doesn't come out of that part. It just comes off of the surface. And you can even take your fingernail if there's a stubborn spot and kind of scratch the paint off. Or you could even use a stir stick. I've seen people do that. They'll take a stir stick and kind of just scratch scrape the top of the piece and the paint comes right off. So after I was satisfied with how clean it was, I flipped it over. We're going to add some liquid latex on the back of this. I get the liquid latex off Amazon and I use the same brush over and over again when I use liquid latex. I don't clean it off or anything. I just let the liquid latex dry on this brush and it actually helps move the liquid latex around easier. And when I do this, I um, use the liquid latex instead of tape. For me, it's easier than taping. And I like to apply the liquid latex thicker around the perimeter because that's where your resin drips are gonna be. So it doesn't matter if it's really thin in the center, just make sure around the edges, it's got a little bit of a thicker application. So you can see I'm kind of making sure it's thicker on the edges and then I'm gonna take the center area and just kind of brush everything and eventually it'll pull together let it dry overnight and then you'll be ready to do your top coat you have to do a top coat to seal in that acrylic paint um, because acrylic paint's not permanent so you have to seal it with a top coat so i raised my calendar here up off my table on some spray paint can lids added two ounces of the Total Boat Tabletop Epoxy. Hit it with my heat gun so I could spread it around easily. I'm going in with my gloved hand. You wanna make sure you always wear nitrile gloves when you work with resin. Nitrile gloves have general chemical resistance. So you wanna make sure you're using nitrile gloves. You don't wanna use vinyl gloves or um, any other type of gloves because the nitrile gloves have the general chemical resistance making sure that I get everything smoothed out nicely. I didn't have enough resin on there, so I added two more ounces of clear. And same thing, I'm just gonna smooth it out, making sure that I get the top covered nicely and the sides covered nicely. And to be honest, guys, when I do clear resin top coats, I almost always have to do two. And um, that's just because sometimes you end up with a bubble or a dust booger lands in there that you didn't see. So if you have to do more than one top coat, don't get discouraged because honestly, most of the time I have to do at least two clear top coats. But if I get it done in one, I'm super happy about it and it's a win. But I always anticipate doing two. I hit it with my torch to pop bubbles and my heat gun. I went in with the heat gun first and then I went in with my torch, covered it up for 24 hours, let it dry, and here we are the next day ready to peel that liquid latex off the back. You can see it peels right off and if you have some spots that are being stubborn, just go grab your heat gun, um, hit it with your heat gun, hit that spot with your heat gun and it'll peel right off. I promise it'll come off like easy it's so easy to do this i love using liquid latex instead of tape um, the liquid latex i get it off amazon i'll link it down below and once i'm done peeling all of these little drips off you can see all the resin drips on the back here i will show you how it turned out here's how it turned out i love how sparkly it is um, the you can see the little black dots that was from bubbles on my first layer So I could have went in with like a toothpick and some 91% isopropyl alcohol and clean those out But this piece is just for me. So it didn't really matter to me. I still love how it turned out Thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you liked it if you did leave me a like hit that thumbs up button Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and go check out a few more of my other videos that would really help out my channel a lot. And as always, I'll link all the materials I used down below in the description box along with any coupon codes that I have. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys are all doing fantastic and I will see you soon for another video. Bye guys.